<clears throat> this is not my job like Mike I'm a volunteer um, I work with uh, <clears throat> a lot of people and helping them find jobs been a headhunter been a corporate uh, been a manager been an executive so anyway you're going to hear an ongoing theme uh, in these sessions and that is everything I'm going to tell you is fairly simplistic about 60 percent of it you probably are going to have trouble believing of the remaining 40 percent there's probably 25 percent of it you're not going to want to do I'm just a messenger and I'm telling you how people that are looking for jobs are finding them in the economy today and there are way more jobs right now in Omaha, Nebraska than we have people here. <clears throat> and we've got jobs in just about every field and we're gonna talk about them in just a minute. First thing that, uh, were there any questions from last week? For those of you that uh, f filled out the uh, survey monkey, I appreciate your feedback, it helps us greatly. Um, except for the person that said it was totally worthless and a waste of time. <clears throat> Didn't see it as a value, which I found kind of frustrating when it was free, so that's a really bad performance. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, where are you going? Uh, where are you going to find a job? And, and uh, I kind of like this. Uh, you do get to a certain point in your life where you have to be realist you have to uh, realistically think understand that the days are getting shorter for some of us uh, they're getting a lot shorter more quickly than others in here <clears throat> you can't put things off thinking you will get them someday if you really want to do them you better do them and i'm very much a believer in knowing what you love doing so that you can do a great deal of it <clears throat> it's pretty good philosophy uh, <clears throat> and I believe in that I've had I've had a uh, a uh, lifetime of going to work from the time I was 22 on that I don't ever remember going to work except for about a nine-month period where I didn't look forward to it I was excited about it <clears throat> Part of it was luck, and once I got through the luck and figured out what it was I really liked, I followed a lot of the principles I learned about this program when I was about 35 years old and wanted to make a career change. And I got involved in it, <clears throat> and it made a lot of difference in my life. For those of you that have worked with me one-on-one, -on -one, you know that there are some of the things that I preach here that I'm pretty adamant about doing myself. <clears throat> so. I've had a, a, a variety of, of different jobs, and believe it or not, once I took an inventory and really understood what it was that, that I was capable of doing, I found out that I was, uh, the sky was a limit in terms of the different kinds of industry that I could work in. So, <clears throat> as we were talking last week, you need to abandon the, tr uh, the traditional job hunt. It doesn't work anymore. Uh, I was with a client yesterday for a couple of hours, and <clears throat> he must have said five or six times, you know, the way I used to do it, and he hadn't looked for a job for about 25, 30 years. So <clears throat> I understand what he's saying. There are a lot of people in here feel the same way, but you can't continue to look for a job the way you've always done it. And if you've been looking hard over the last six months and nothing's happening, not even an interview, you really need to rethink your job search and how you're going about it. Can you see okay over here? Okay. <clears throat> you've got to be focused on your job hunt. You've really got to work it. I mean, you really, you, 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 you got to sit down and if you're currently unemployed, this has to be at least a 40 hour job. If you go to the job service, they're gonna tell you, or if you go to the unemployment office, and by the way, that's a great place to find a job. But if you go down there and you go through their training program, they're gonna tell you a lot of the same things we're talking about here. And that is your full-time job has to be finding a job. It's that simple, you gotta work it. 
That's hard to do because you get frustrated. <clears throat> if it isn't working, it's the way you're hunting. It's not the job market. You need to discover the hot, ab the hot things about you that you need to take out to the market, not what's hot in the market. The product that you're selling, a lot of you are not salespeople, but you've got to be a salesperson when you're looking for a job. The product you're selling is you. How many times have you had somebody, whether it's retail or door to door or going in for service on your car or coming out to do something at your house for you, Occasionally you run into somebody that doesn't know what the hell they're talking about and they can't tell you what it is they're going to do, but they can tell you how much it's going to cost. And all I can say is you can't be one of those people. You have to know what you have to offer, what your product is worth. And you can't know what your product is worth if you don't know what it is you have to offer. You have to go after the companies that you want to work for. <clears throat> the emphasis here is that you want to work for. If you go after the companies you want to work for, you're going to have the same experience I've had, and that is you're always going to enjoy going to work. If you can get to those companies that you want to work for and do the things that you want to do, you will not believe how great it is. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> You get to choose where you work. What careers or jobs have you decided you are qualified for? Now, last week, we talked about taking an inventory, taking a personal inventory. We talked about getting in touch with our transferable skills. We talked about learning all of the skills that we have. And <clears throat> that is how you can start deciding on what job you want to look for. You have to look at your knowledge. If you're not sure, and transferable skills are hard until you get kind of engaged with them. Transferable skills are all of those things that you know how to do that you've been doing them so long you don't know you do them because you have a job description and you're focused on doing the job description, but you forget about how many people you might manage, how many people manage you, how many different projects you take on, how you've developed phone skills, how you've developed in-person skills how you've learned to read a bottom line, how you've learned to use the internet, how you've lear learned to use the different software packages. That's all transferable skills. Those are things that are not directly uh, related necessarily to the job that you're doing. <clears throat> but if you have problems with that, ask your friends. Uh, what do you think I'm good at? What do you think of, you know, what would you see me doing if you didn't know what I've done in the past? It's okay to ask your kids. You might be a little cautious about asking your spouse. <clears throat> uh, that can get a little tough sometimes. But anyway, ask friends. And then <clears throat> look at all your job. When your job skills boil down to working with people or working with information or ideas and things. So you're going to find out, and you've got to be aware of that, that you either like working with people or you like to work with ideas or things. Things being you're mechanical. Uh, things being that you're into IT and you're great at, at being on the computer. But you need to know which of those two places you want to be. Uh, and you may think you would want to be in one or the other, but yeah, that's the other reason again. You've got to look at your transferable skills and what you're really good at. <clears throat> you need to try on careers before you pursue them. Just like going out and buying a suit, buying a new dress, buying a new skirt, buying a new pair of shoes. You try them on. See if they look good on you. Look in the mirror. You need to research your careers that you think you might want to be interested in. <clears throat> You're going, what do you mean? What are you talking about? You know? I'm an administrative assistant. I'm going to get a job being an administrative assistant. Well, only if that's what you want to do. If you want to do something else, then you need to find out what it is you want to do, and you need to talk to people that are doing it. 
need to talk to people, your good friends, the people that you have the closest relationship with. Ask them <coughs> the things you have, the people you have the most common in. Find out what they do and why they like what they're doing. And whether or not you have the skills and the knowledge that can, you can qualify. <coughs> you can look on LinkedIn. Talk to people about their careers. Look at all your contacts on LinkedIn. Ask if they'll meet you. <coughs> Once you find out what you want to do, you, <coughs> you research what it takes to do it. And sooner or later, you'll find the career that fits you. So it's all about your skills, your special knowledge, your fields of interest. Do you have what it takes to get the job you want, or is it going to take more experience or education? And if so, what are you going to do about that? But keep in mind, as you look at those lists of skills that they post in the paper, and you go online and you look up the job and they tell you everything they want, I brought a job description. Uh, <clears throat> I, I have, the job hasn't even been posted yet, and for those of you that might be interested in it, I'll tell you about it a little later. It's got three pages of job description. I mean, that is some HR person sitting there that just doesn't have anything to do. I mean, somebody is just sitting there going, well, wow, I better look busy. I better write another page on the job descriptions. You interview the hiring manager and you start talking about, I have all of these skills, and they go, huh, what? What are you talking about? I didn't know that we, we had to have that. Happens. It happens. Hey, Larry. Yeah. That's true because when they put a job description where I work for people for what I do, it's a couple of pages long. Hell yeah. Yeah. You know, and when I look at a lot of job descriptions, I know I can't apply there because I know there's not any, any chance at it. I mean, without even reading them, I know I can't do three pages worth of things to do. <laughs> Plus, it sounds like too much work. <clears throat> so, um, the good news, I said to you, and we started to look at this uh, last week, my, my, my slides weren't presented very well, so hopefully I've cleaned them up so you can understand it. But, there are thousands of jobs right now in Omaha that need to be filled. I don't know if any of you read the uh, <clears throat> World Herald. Uh, for you younger people, that's a newspaper that you can take your trash out in. And, <clears throat> and, um, and it's got every now and then they have good comic strips in there. But <clears throat> in the World Herald, there was a great section on working this week. There hasn't been something like that for five or six years was a great section. And on the money page, a financial page, there was a <clears throat> column written by David Brown, who's the uh, CEO and president of the Greater Chamber of Commerce. And, and uh, David has done remarkable things for the city. He's probably <clears throat> stronger than any other city or county um, employee out there because he's kind of the go-to guy. When the mayor wants something, they go to the Chamber of Commerce. This Chamber of Commerce is much more than just shaking hands and getting to know people. They work very hard on economic development. They're so effective in what they do that the Council Bluffs, president of the Council Bluffs Chamber of Commerce belongs to the Omaha Chamber. Uh, the head of Sarpy County Economic Development has got an office in the Omaha Chamber. Head of uh, Economic Development for Washington County has got a, a, an office in the chamber. So they're really a, a <clears throat> They're really in the center of the action. So let's look at, uh, but what I started to say is David Brown was talking about, <clears throat> we're kind of in, it's the good news and the bad news. The good news is we currently, with the low unemployment, have so many high quality jobs that we don't have enough people to fill them. And what they're doing is, as they read about all these layoffs, we all read these, about these layoffs, and unless you read a little bit further, they very seldom apply to Omaha, but when you read about all of these layoffs, <clears throat> and when Omaha reads about the layoffs and the chamber reads about the layoffs, they immediately go to those cities and start trying to recruit people. Microsoft just had massive layoffs, and they're very aggressively recruiting 
the chamber is very aggressively recruiting for people in Seattle and in Portland and in San Francisco. PayPal has, has dumped a bunch of jobs. Uh, they're all, we're in there following the jobs, following where the layoffs are, finding where the biggest downsides are, and we're trying to recruit those people. So the question is, why aren't you out there getting those jobs? Why are we going to Portland and Seattle? Because a lot of you are qualified for those very positions. But interestingly enough, they're not going to go look for you. You're here. So you've got to make it known that you're available. When you say available, we are open to find another job out in this area. Excuse me? What was your question? When we, we're out looking for jobs, yeah. and when you say, I'm open for work, then you should open, up, open yourself up to any, any job, any work. Is that what no. you're saying? No. I'm saying that you've taken an inventory and you know what you are capable of doing. You, <clears throat> you know what your transferable skills are. You know what education you have. And then you go look for those jobs where you fit. That's what I'm saying. Not any job. Right. Because there's a lot, a lot of or there's a lot of underemployment in Omaha. And the reason that we have underemployment in Omaha in many cases is because we don't know how to look for jobs. <clears throat> or we don't know what we can do and how to present ourselves to get the jobs we want. <clears throat> this is my third week of giving you this number, but I think it's pretty excited, and it's like, you know, it's almost, if you're into church, it's almost like a religious experience when you actually think about the numbers here. Uh, this was taken in December, or in, November, or in October, tallied in December, 300 companies, all different sizes in Omaha, mostly employees of 200 or more. 69% of those companies expect sales revenues to increase. 39% are planning on increased capital investment this year. 49% expect staff levels to remain the same. Now, that's good news because those companies are gonna have people retiring. They're gonna have people they're promoting. And if that stays steady, they're gonna need to replace those people. Here's the big number. You're not going to have 49 percent expect, 46 percent, add those two numbers together, expect to create new positions in 2015. And we'll get a little bit more into the industry, but trust me, they're not all working at McDonald's. <coughs> yeah? Why are you having such a hard time finding people in some of these industries when we have all these colleges mm -hmm. and people graduating? In certain degrees and stuff, why do you have such a hard time not recruiting That question has is, is got a lot of uh, <clears throat> tentacles to it. Uh, there, one, one is maybe not enough experience. Um, two is uh, really not knowing who's available and those people not being able to present themselves properly. That's where the lowest unemployment is. Any of you have kids in college now? <laughs> wow. You need, you need two jobs. <clears throat> <clears throat> now I know who will be paying attention. <laughs> Let's see the hands. <laughs> you know. Uh, Here's what I find. I've got, a, I've got two grandsons that are uh, graduating this year uh, from college. <clears throat> and both of them from great schools, both of them in great fields, and they've done absolutely nothing to prepare them for the job market. They've not done very, very little to tell them how to go find work. You know, <clears throat> the, every school, almost every major college, has got some kind of a job resource office. They like to know that their graduates are finding work. That always looks good when they're trying to recruit other students. And there are companies on most of these campuses recruiting students. 
But either the companies are doing a lousy job or the professors are doing a lousy job or the placement office is doing a lousy job because the kids just don't know about it. So <clears throat> that's one of the things that's going on with young people. I, yeah? Is there a number nationwide that uh, talks to the college and graduation and the lack of jobs, the percentages? Is it high? Is it, is it it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's the highest group of unemployed people in the country. So Between the ages of 16 and 24. Now they're getting educated, they're just not getting educated on how to go find a job and or they don't want to work for a job or look for a job. Well, the trouble with work many times is it just sounds like too much work. <clears throat> so uh, what careers or jobs uh, you've decided you're qualified, you try on the cause, what kind of organizations have such jobs? I just told you about the low unemployment here. I just told you that everyone's going to be hiring. I said there were a lot of jobs that are available. Well, where are they? Well, right here in Omaha. Again, that was in that um, thing they leave at the door for those of you that subscribe that you use to start your fire or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> In the healthcare, there's 2,932 jobs that are unfilled right now today. Educational services, there are 920 jobs that are unfilled today. Transportation, 910. Finance and insurance. Manufacturing, 1120. Professional, scientific, scientific and technical service, 820. Real estate, 120. Leisure and hospitality, 1,590. Most of those positions, leisure hospitality, that can be really good or it can be really, really bad. But most of those, most of those industries have got some, some uh, really well-paying jobs. Uh, <clears throat> anyone here that, that has been uh, labor, uh, working, working with their hands, working in manufacturing, working in the trades, is there anyone that does that? That's a great place to be. They, they are really hurting for good people. And for young people, you know, if they're not out there hustling with their degree or they're not out there, or they didn't get a degree, they can get a job right away making more money than most college graduates can in the trades. If you have the, if you have, <laughs> <laughs> if you're flexible enough to want to be a welder, I've talked to some companies in Omaha that say we're to a point where it's so hard to find good welders that we're going to start having to offer them executive benefits. I mean, we're paying them top dollar. We're going to have to start offering them a company car and, and, and uh, country club benefits in order to get them because they're so scarce. You can make great money. Another trade that you can do. Truck drivers. You know, here's the deal. We have all of these jobs. <clears throat> how many of you in there, how many are, are, are in the healthcare business? And have any experience in healthcare? Okay. How many of you look in, in, at, at companies that are into healthcare for jobs? That's better than I thought. Why aren't you all looking there? Do you see how many jobs are available? Do you really think you can't work in that industry? They need administrative people. They need sales people. They need HR people. They need trainers. Never think about it. Uh, <clears throat> transportation. Wow, we have two of the largest railroads in the world headquartered here. A lot of transportation. I know if I were a truck driver and was tired of the road beating me up, I'd go down to the Union Pacific and ask what, try to find out what it would take to become an engineer on the railroad. That's kind of cool. You have two levers, one stop, one go. <laughs> you don't have to steer. 
You work about six hour days if you're over the road. You make a lot more than truck drivers. Pretty cool. But that's where the jobs are. And if you're not looking, you need to get going to it. Now what about the names of the places that are interested in you? How do you find the people that are, obviously for those of you that are not in healthcare, you're not calling up healthcare facilities, even though you should be. Any teachers in here? Any teachers that want to get out of the teaching business in here? I have a private client that I was working with, and a, <clears throat> Mike, and for the couple of you that have worked with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm not for everyone because I'm getting, I'm getting too old and I, I don't have time for filters. I got to get the job done, so I just kind of go right for the juggler. And, uh, <clears throat> but it, for those that are paying me, you know, they either have to accept the, face, the fact that uh, I'm paying this guy to insult me or he's making the most of my time and it's not costing me so much. <laughs> but the point is, uh, there are so many different things that you can do with those transferable skills. I wonder, I, I met a lot of guys that tell me they're truck driving, they can't find a job driving trucks. I see in the newspaper all the time, and if you go online, everyone's looking for truck drivers. Uh, you've got several of the, the trade schools in Omaha that are totally devoted to training truck drivers because there's such a shortage of truck drivers. So my assumption is that people that aren't driving trucks <clears throat> don't want to drive trucks. So why aren't they looking at other jobs? Railroad type jobs, smaller driving jobs, local driving jobs. You know, how about information research? Teachers, you want to get out of being a teacher. I started to tell you, I have this gal, she's a teacher. She's actually a college professor, and she said, I've just had it. I can't do it anymore. I can't do it. It's just, it's all changed. I've been doing it for 30 years. I need to do something else. So we had a session, and I talked to her about her transferable skills, and we talked about all the different things she'd like to do. And I said, I want you to come prepared next week and show me what it is you, you, you think you could do with, with the skills that you have. And she came back, and she did a pretty good job on that assignment. And I asked her to do a resume. And she'd been out looking for five or six jobs out there that she never got a follow-up on. And I looked at her resume, and I said, well, what did you look at in this? And she said, well, <clears throat> I, I, I applied to be uh, in the administration. This one I applied for research. Um, and I said, well, you know, your resume says that you're a teacher. Well, but that's what I've been doing. I know, but that's not what you want to do. <clears throat> Why are you emphasizing everything is teaching, 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 teaching? You are a teacher, but why don't you transfer those skills and talk in terms of how you work with people? I used the word last week, manipulation. A lot of people kind of gasp. Manipulation can be very good. And <clears throat> manipulation is, is uh, very powerful if it's used correctly. Uh, selling, almost anyone can sell if they want to. One of the strongest salesperson that I've ever met are ministers. Got a minister in the back of the room. I, t I said this to a priest, I was working for a priest, and I said, no one can sell like you. And he said, well, I'm, I'm good with people. I don't know if I could actually go out and, and sell for a living. <clears throat> I said, let's think about it. <clears throat> You've been telling me for 30 years about the virgin birth. You've been telling me about Christ and his teachings. You've talked to me about the resurrection, and I believe all of that. I believe all of that. Somewhere along the line, you had to be somewhat persuasive to get me to buy into this. And it's a fact. It's a fact. It's a tough job. <clears throat> but teachers, what can teachers do? Teachers are trainers. Teachers are communicators. When I was younger working for Procter & Gamble, one of our jobs as sales managers and regional sales managers, we always had one or two colleges assigned to us 
to recruit college students from, and I'd start following them their sophomore year. And in looking at all the talent that was coming up, I met a lot of teachers, and we never hired teachers at Procter & Gamble because teachers wanted to do good. They weren't, teachers didn't make money. They weren't interested in making money. We were motivated by selling. We were motivated by making commissions. We were motivated by bonuses. We were all excited about that. And the more you talk to teachers, they really love what they were doing, but they were having trouble making it. So I started talking to teachers about getting into sales, and it was, I can't sell, I can't sell. You stand in front of a class all the day, half of them don't want to learn. You put up with attitude all the time, you overcome objections. You deal with it day in and day out. That's what sales is. Sales is consultative selling, you have to ask questions. It's, all, it's not like it used to be, you ask questions, and once you ask the right questions, you'll find out if it's somebody that can use your product. So, <clears throat> teachers can do just about anything. I can't imagine there being a position that somebody with teaching skills couldn't handle if they wanted to and if they put themselves to it and studied it. So quit pigeonholing yourself Look at the many things you can do. Uh, this was an ad that I was working with with a client yesterday, <clears throat> and I, my, my question was, do you ever look, what do you look under? Well, I, I think, you know, I've, I've, I've been a uh, law enforcement officer all my life, and I, I, I really got out of it because I was tired of what was involved in all of that. I didn't like policing, um, but it looks like I'm going to, I, I, I've been looking for some security offices and there aren't that, uh, officer positions and there aren't that many positions. You ever look under professional? You ever, go online? you ever go online and look at professional openings? You ever go on the paper and look under professional? Professional. You know, this is in there with doctors, nurses, IT people, highly skilled people. There you have security officer. Here's one that is a super, that's over security officers. That's probably a $60,000 a year job, maybe a $70,000 a year job, but it's under professional. It's not under security. It's not under police work. It's under professional. In the course of getting ready for this meeting yesterday, I saw this ad and uh, Iowa Western, for those of you that can't see it, and <clears throat> I've never had any desire to work for a college for whatever reason. I don't know. It just seems a little too staid for me. Not enough, not enough um, <clears throat> flexibility, not enough freedom, not enough. I like being outside and kind of doing what I want. And I'm looking here, training coordinator, economic development. And I knew somebody that had done that. Matter of fact, it's somebody from this church, and I placed them in that position. And I knew a little bit of th a little bit about it. They were doing it. For, they're doing it for um, University of Nebraska. And I looked up the job description. And I've had corporate experiences. I've owned my own businesses. I know what it. I I, I, I consult with companies to turn their business plan around, uh, turn their companies around. And that is what this job does. This job goes out and calls on companies, big and small in South West Iowa and Northwest Iowa and tries to bring corporate accounts that need their assistance in making them more successful, helping them put their structure together. I'd have never thought to look for a job there. I kind of took my own advice. I put together my information and I walked it over there today. I didn't mail it. I didn't email it. I walked in. I didn't go to the HR department. I went to see the gentleman that runs this whole thing. And now I know he knows that I'm a good candidate. He's very interested in talking to me again. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure I want the job now. But anyway, the point is, I did everything that I, I'm telling you to do. 
So there are a lot and lot of jobs out there. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, how did you know the person who was in contact? Where'd you get the name? Well, you call the switchboard and says, who runs your economic development? I have a business. I need to talk to somebody that runs economic development. Who's the head of the department? So you lie. I own a business. <laughs> I didn't lie. I own a business. When you're looking for this job, I'm still up here on this one, name of the places that interest you. <clears throat> goes back to the things we discussed over the last two weeks. Once you start looking for those things, once you know what kind of skills you want to use, once you, once you learn what kind of occupation that you think you might want to switch to or you might want to take advantage of, and you start looking at those jobs, you need to do some things. Like I, you know, I, I, I talked in terms of um, welders. You know, if you're a welder and there's a shortage of welder, what part of the city do you live in? And should you find some companies that are relatively close so you don't have to deal with a commute? What kind of welding do you want to do? Do you want to work? Do you want to what? Do you want to work on boilers? Do you want to work on semis? I mean, there's demand for all of those things. Big boiler manufacturer here in town. How many people do you want to work with? Do you want to work with 20 other welders? You want to work with five other welders? You want to be the only welder? You want to work for a company that's got 100 employees, 500? You have to think about all of that. Police officer, you know, what can you do? Security positions. Insurance companies have a lot of people that investigate fraud. People are getting pretty smart on beating the insurance companies and claiming benefits. Fraud investigation. One of the things that we discussed yesterday is how about teaching criminal justice? Well, I don't have a teaching degree. You don't need one at Metro Community College. You don't need one at Iowa Western. How about a corporate trainer? You guys ever think, any, anyone ever been stopped by a police officer here? God, what a clean bunch of people we have, no one. <laughs> wow, congratulations, no one speeds, no one does anything wrong, we must be in church. And <laughs> <clears throat> our well, the bum rap they're getting right now, um, for the most part, police officers have had a lot of training to make it as painless as possible, especially in speeding. They usually are fairly courteous. They usually call you sir or ma'am. Uh, when I was younger, I liked that. Now that I'm older, I say, why don't you call me Lair? You know, but anyway, don't call me mister, please. But... <clears throat> You know, they're very, very good. And you're not happy about being stopped. You're not happy about being busted for theft. You're not being happy busted for anything that you did wrong. And a police officer has to learn how to keep you calm, make you cooperate. And there's nothing he's going to suggest to you that you want to do. And yet, the really great police officers and the people that have been taught to respect police officers usually make that adjustment right away. I've seen, I've got tickets from officers where I almost apologize for taking up his time. He was so nice. I mean, they can be very, very nice. So what can a police officer do? How about training? How about training? They, they, they do a lot of training at work. The older guys that have been around for a while teach the new guys. They have great training skills. A lot of flexibility. <clears throat> but most of you in this room, if you had a friend that was going to retire from being a police officer, you'd say, well, they got to work in security. Maybe work as a security guard in a lot. Now nah, they've got a lot of education. They, they really, most of them have to have a degree. Anyway, once you find out what might interest you, then you have to start doing a lot of research. <clears throat> and you really want to get into that company. You really want to see what they have to offer. And how do you do that? 
you ask your friends. You ask friends that have had experience in that industry. You get on LinkedIn. I think the, the, common, the most common complaint I've heard in this group, and I understand it because I was there not long ago, I really don't like to be on the internet. I really don't like to use my computer. I hate Facebook. I don't even know what LinkedIn is. Well, LinkedIn is your best friend. And Jeff made that pretty, should have made that pretty obvious to most of you a couple of weeks ago. Go on LinkedIn, put in a job description and then search for your own friends. Go through that screen and look through that group of people and see who's doing what you're thinking about doing. Reach out to them and ask them about the job. Find out if it's something you want to do. So you've done all this research, you've checked out these places, you've called your friends, you've done everything you can to find out about where you might want to work. And along the line, you, you know, a buddy of yours, girlfriend says, come on over and I'll show you around and see what we do and you're meeting people. And all of a sudden they offer you not necessarily bad, but what do you do if you haven't done your research? Remember we started out this whole, this, this, this whole trip talking about enjoying what you're doing, finding the right job that's for you. If you're desperate, and there are several of you in here that I know are desperate, you need the job, then you take it. If you're not desperate, if you've got some kind of a severance package or something, a, a, a spouse that can help you, and you don't need it right away, then you need to sell it. And whoever offered the job say, wow, that's great. When will that job be available? You know, <clears throat> here's what I can tell you. I'm really impressed with your company, and I'm flattered that you offered me a job. Um, I've been looking for a job now for several months, and I really want to go to work, but I want to make sure it's the right match for me and the employer, and I've got to do a little bit more research. So hopefully, that job will be available for a little while, at least a couple weeks, three weeks, four weeks, um, while I do my due diligence. And if I find out that you're perfect for what I'm looking for, we both win. Because at that time I know I really want to work here and I'll apply myself. If I just take it now and I'm not sure, a month from now you'll be going through this process all over again and I'll be doing the same thing. So, sounds pretty corny. I see people do it all the time. I've been in a hiring position many, many times and people say, wow, I gotta think about it. And they, I mean, I know for a fact that they really need a job. So, there's an important thing about looking for a job. I'm giving you all these things. Job hunting is not a science, it's an art. It's an art, it's engaging. Some people just get it. They know what to do. They take this stuff seriously. They work as many things as possible. When Jeff back here was looking for work, I networked a lot. I would see him at every networking event I attended. I told you, for those of you that were here a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned this. He was everywhere. Looked at a lot of different jobs, and in the course of looking and, and trying to figure out what he wanted to do, he realized, as he asked people, do you have any openings you know might be hiring, that there were a lot of people that needed his services, but they probably didn't need him full time. And so he launched his business. And he's still at all of the networking places because you go to a networking event and you got 100 people in there versus making 100 phone calls or knocking on 100 doors. You got 100 people in there that have the potential of hiring you. Show of hands, how many of you went to the chamber event last Thursday? Jeff was there, I was there, not many people. Now what was the name of it? 
Greater Omaha Chamber of Com Commerce Coffee and Contacts. Last Thursday morning. Chamber of Commerce. Omaha, Greater Omaha Chamber of Commerce Coffee and Contacts. It was at Whole Foods. It was an invitation to, I don't know how many of you have been to Whole Foods, but it was an invitation to gain at least five pounds in two hours. <laughs> <laughs> they had all their pastries out. And I would have been okay, because I'm not big on pastry, but boy, they have a lot of chocolate stuff over there. <laughs> I'm a sucker for chocolate. <laughs> they had what? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, so when you go to these networking events and you introduce yourself and have your, you know, your or whatever, you're not carrying around your resume. Is it smart to have some sort of a business card with you or yes. something else? You should have a business card. And I've seen some people very effectively highlight their skills on the back of the business card turning into a mini resume. And they come up with some really clever title that says they're looking for a job. They used to have a, a group called the Gold Group, guys and gals on arbitrary leave would meet every Tuesday morning for breakfast. Um, it was mostly executives that couldn't find work. Of course, people in the world to find a job are executives. They have no idea how to look for a job. But anyway, we'd meet, and one of them, we went, I, I, I had the group, we joined the, the chamber as a group, as an organization, so they could go all of the networking events and not pay. <clears throat> and uh, one of the guys in the group, they always have a drawing in every one of these, like they do at any kind of things here and pull your card in. His card was drawn, and it was something about uh, cur currently available for something and something. And uh, he picked up like a $50 gift basket and walked away with two interviews. Got a job out of one. He, was, he actually attended this group once a long time. Now, I had two of my clients, uh, one of which I got from this group. School teacher, got a master's degree, certified in counseling, worked for District 66, has a stack of great things going on, and she just has had it. She wants a new career. And so I told her, you know, I'm going to be there. You got to come. You, can, you know, I'll show you how, how to work the group. Well, she made me, and she made me look like I had no idea what I was doing because she was just out mixing, mixing, mixing. She got four four interests and has had two job interviews since last Thursday, and she's going in for a second. Uh, <coughs> It's all about networking. The great thing about a chamber event like that, it's all salespeople, and they all want to do business with each other. So they're not threatened, they're not insulted when you ask them for something. Because they're asking everyone in the room for something also. That's why they're there. So when you go to an event like that, and they start telling you what they do, and they have no idea what you do, uh, they look at your tag and you got something cute as to, you know, whatever it is you're doing. They, they start telling you all about how wonderful their company is and you say, it's a great company, I'm looking for a job. Who would I talk to? to be, who do I need to talk to? They'll give you the name. Always will give you the name. Can I use your name? You get their business card and you write down, okay to use her name. And you call the decision maker up, and I was talking to uh, Sally, and, and Sally was just going on and on about what a great company it is. And it sounded like a place I'd like to work. You know, I've done some research online. I know a lot about your company. How do I get a job? Right? It's not complicated. Take some of you out of your comfort zone. But think of how simple that is. And when you go to, the other thing that happens when you go to those kind of networking events, there's so much activity. You got, it's a feeding frenzy. Everyone's talking to each other. They're all having coffee, especially at some place. You know, they're at a different location every month. Um, thank goodness, or, you know, I'd be on the treadmill uh, every
every day for two hours just to get over my monthly meeting there. But they had they had uh, 200 people show up. There was a lot of activity. There was a lot of business down there. So you need to go to these networking events. Can you list other ones? Other than the chamber? We post, we post all of the events on our website okay. here. We post all of them. There are job fairs coming up. There's always a job fair coming up. There were three or four job fairs listed in the paper. Yeah? I have been unable to attend the last two sessions of this because I have a job and it's parlayed into something really great. But I have followed you in your messages, your emails and things. And I have Googled by name, and there are so many services out there that want to tell you what they have, but they want you to pay the upfront fee. And it's frustrating because one of them had something that I didn't really appreciate, and I had a, a criminal record. And I'm like, you know, I really don't want to pay $25.99 to find out that they've got the wrong person. And that my name is more common than I thought, actually. It's misspelled, <laughs> and it's like, seriously, there's several of me in the world? What do you I've suggest? never had that happen. I've never had that happen. Okay. And, and you know, you're right, there, there are fees on Google. You go to look up a company or get some information about them on Google, and you can't get the information. You need to go to the company website. So many of those are hooked up. No one uses a telephone book anymore, so, so, so many of them are hooked up to some kind of service that does a criminal background check, does all those things. And, and, and you're in the wrong section of where you want to be. I know that some of those sites have, you click on a job and see what, what you're looking for, and then they, they show up and then they want you to fill something out, and then they have a thing to talk for college training and all that stuff. Like, you got to go through all this stuff just to get to a job. Well, <laughs> you have to remember that uh, not, not everything is free, yeah. Yeah. and they all they all cook they all you know to offer you free service. They hook up with advertisers and marketers that want to sell to. Larry, that, that's sort of why we sort of stress that you should do CareerLink, which is a local firm, and they are it's free, and they've got some of the best local jobs out there. Versus, let's say, Monster or Career Builder, because those are the ones that you're talking about that get that kind of ad. Uh, another one is LinkedIn. LinkedIn has jobs. Those people pay to put those jobs on there. But you're never so those are the kind of things that you should be looking at. LinkedIn has thrown a curve at us over the last year, year and a half, as they've expanded their product and gotten much better at what they do. <clears throat> if you want to have an open rein on looking, you have to pay for their service. If you want to be able to access everyone's information that isn't connected with you or corporate information you have to pay for. That's why you have to build a big network. Yeah. Yeah. There's the other thing to remember about job search. There's, no, there's never an always wrong or right way to do it. You know, I, I, I get up here and I give you all of these things to do and you say, I, I don't know where I'm going to find time to do all of those things. Or you say, I don't want to do those things. Well, there are 16 ways to find a job. And if you're working three or four of them at any given time, you should be golden. And what you do with that is you're working those different ways to find a job. At the end of the month, you take an inventory and you go, well, how much should I hear from this? Any action from this one? Any action from this one? You look at the ones that have the least action, and you slip in two new ways. What's the benefit of that? A couple of benefits. It's not just about finding a job. It changes your search. It keeps you engaged. It's all of a sudden doing something that you haven't done before. It's also reminding yourself that if you keep doing the same thing with no results, if you continue to do it all year long, you're going to get the same results. So change your way of doing a search. It makes your search much more uh, interesting. People. 
and this is a big deal. How many of you, how many of you are currently not on LinkedIn? Anyone? Now you're probably afraid to raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> What's your question? Huh? Question. What is your question? My question was, who's not on LinkedIn? Okay. You need to get on LinkedIn. It's going to be a common theme. That's all I'm going to talk about. You got to be on LinkedIn, or you can really anything other than LinkedIn. You're really making it hard. That's how. That's how much it's all changed. LinkedIn is your best friend. It's not like Facebook. You know, if somebody on if somebody on on, on LinkedIn post what they had for breakfast are usually out of the system in a couple of hours. LinkedIn pulls the plug on them. If you start asking a bunch of strangers to join your LinkedIn enough times, they'll get upset about it and you'll be off. Any complaints or uninvited uh, uh, solicitation for a relationship, you're out. But if you're on my LinkedIn and you see somebody that you wish to connect with, you can ask me to ask that person to accept them. That's how it works. Okay. People. Bridge. People. We used to call this maybe networking. Making contacts, but here's here's there are so many things. Again, LinkedIn is going to make it work a lot smoother for you. You can go on there. You can look for companies. You can search for companies on LinkedIn. You can search for. You can put the company name in and find out are you your which friends work there that are on your network. You can look up friends and see where they work. There are a lot of ways to use LinkedIn to find out what's going on. For any of you that have gone a, a, a post-secondary education, whether it's in the trades or in a university, you need to contact them. You need to go to their place, their placement office, where they're working with corporations. Again, that business has gotten very competitive to find students. And they like to be able to tell you how many of their graduates found a job or their long-term graduates are working in a good position. If you're on an alumni list, you always they love to they love to publish all the names of people that are doing great things. So go to your university. How about a former employer? Have you left in good stead? You just got downsized? Uh, that happens, there's a lot of that going on. Why not call up your employer and say, hey, what's going on? Former employer. It'd be a long time ago. Uh, your friends, of course. Any industry associations you belong to. <laughs> Teacher <laughs> union. Um, fire union, police union, all the different unions. All of the different organizations. Ask them. Old neighbors. Old neighbors that you remember had some influence. Call them up and say, I'm in a position making a career change. I'm kind of looking for this. Do you know of anyone that can help me? Current neighbors. Call up the company you're targeting. Consider if your search is really getting hot and you really have done all your homework and you know where you want to go, it might be worth taking a month-to-month -month, uh, membership on LinkedIn for the advanced search. You can also advertise on LinkedIn for a connection. Now, how do you advertise? You don't have to pay for that advertising. You just simply put a post out there to everyone that's under you, that's in your network, looking for a job. Here's what I'm looking for. Any suggestions? 
You're saying just send like send a resume to them, cover letter. No, 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 no. No, you just send them. You just send a post. You, you, you do a post and say, "Hey, I'm currently looking for a job doing this." It goes to everyone. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And then if they know if they know of something, they contact you. And then again, I don't know that I'd send a resume. I want to talk to them. And I believe the resume is something that you take in with you. Any reason why why you don't send a resume to these people? Yeah, they didn't ask for it. Yeah. Well, true, true. And you're, if you've got 150 friends on LinkedIn and you send a resume to all of them, you'll probably end up with 20 friends on LinkedIn. <laughs> they don't want to get your resume. They don't mind helping you, but they don't want to deal with your resume. If all of us did that when we were looking for a job, all you'd be saw LinkedIn, and no one would belong to LinkedIn. They'd just be receiving the resumes all the time. But you can tell people you're looking, and you can tell people what you're looking for. And if there are solid connections, a lot of them will probably help you. So is that a good idea if you already have a job, in case your employer <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, if you, if you, if you pull, that's all right. I mean, that's all right. It just kind of ups the ante on how quickly you have to find a job. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get a lot more serious about your look in a hurry. <laughs> you know, I guess I guess it, I guess uh, the most discouraging news is is when your boss says, "See, I, I saw your name on, uh, I saw you out there on LinkedIn. I see you're looking for a job." Well, mm, yeah, kinda. Yeah, but well, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Or you might get promoted because they know you're looking and they want to keep you. Sometimes. Sometimes. You know, and even that, 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 there's a problem with that. A lot of people do that. A lot of companies do that. But the problem with that, the downside to that is, in the back of their mind, they always know you were going to quit. They promote you because they don't want to lose you, and the second somebody that comes along that looks like they're going to be a little bit more dedicated, that can fill your shoes, and it doesn't always happen, but it's certainly it's certainly a possibility. Okay, let's see. Different types of job interviews. We're going to get into the job interview now, and. Uh, I'm going to shut it down, but there are different types of job interviews, <coughs> and you're not going to relate to the three type I'm going to tell you about right now. This is kind of your pre-interview. You want to go to all of your friends, all the people you know, who are passionate about the same things you are, have the same interests, you know, love music love knitting, love playing racket sports, love working out, like Pilates. Um, and when you're doing those things with them, tell them what you're thinking about and ask them if they know anyone that does it, those things, or ask them if they do it. Many times they'll do it. And if they're doing it, how do you like it? What do you know there that can help me? Now we can, we can call that a job interview or we can call it a conversation. But the difference between the conversation and a job interview is when you're asking them for some help and some information. How many times do we, how, is, how many times do we sit and talk to people day in and day out that have the answer to what we're looking for, they just don't know you're looking for? It happens constantly. People have worked, have worked in the same type of job in which you are interested. Research those people, find those people. Again, the same thing. Um, you're, you're just reaching out to them. Um, you're reaching out to people. Like I say, you go sit in a parking lot. One of the great places to find a job is a church. Let everyone at church know. But you know what we do? 
we see somebody after the service and we're walking out, hey, how's it going? How's it going great? You know, I got downsized and things are good, but I'm looking for a job. If you know of anything, let me know. You know, I just might. Call them up. If you just leave it there, they forget immediately. You got to follow with them. Let them know you're really looking for a job. Not only are you looking a job, but you really need a job. And keep them, keep on their radar, so that they're thinking about you. But anyway, people, people are work, people who work or have worked in the type of job that you're interested in. That's a great way to go. Experts in the industry, find out, go online, find out, go to your, again, go to your LinkedIn and see how many of your friends that are on LinkedIn are in the industry that you're in. Call them up and ask them. <coughs> again, you might call this a conversation. But you're looking for work. Well, employees, employer, employees of employers that have the power to hire you, not HR. You know, how many times do you find out that the, your next door neighbor, you really haven't paid, you, you're always, you know, talking about the football game or having a barbecue or having a beer and you know they work somewhere, but you have, you know, they work at Ameritrade, they work here, but you have no idea what they do. You assume they must be a broker because that's what Ameritrade does. They're a research analyst or an IT person or a maintenance person. They're a trainer. It could be a lot of things that you want to do. So, you know, find the people that are doing what you want to do and ask them about it. Then ask them if they have the power to get you in. So, we're going to wrap up there. Uh, we go into the fun stuff now. We're going to go into interviewing next week and salary negotiation. And the I guarantee you, if so far this stuff has all been boring, I promise next week it will be mine. Because the interview thing, the hard work is, the hard work is getting to the interview. The interview thing can be a blast if you know what you're doing. And of maybe 50 people I've coached, maybe six or seven have used the five interview questions that I suggest they use, and every time they've gotten the job. Five questions that you should be you should be using on your interview, and you'll get the job. It's that simple. The hard part is getting in for the interview. You think about how hard it was to get in the interview. You better be ready for the interview. See, I want to do another. Thank you.